What's up, everybody? What's going on? This is Quinn Goss, and I'm with Wande. What's good, Wande? What's up? What's up? What's up? So you just came up with tour. Yeah, I did, man. It was crazy. How, how, how was, like, the whole experience? Uh, for me, honestly, it was really beautiful. I think the crazier part is, like, watching the recap videos, and you're like, wow, like, these are, like, thousands of lives who are, like, singing the songs and impacted and, like, enjoying what we do. So it's just been beautiful to see, like, the transition of, like, where I started to, like, where we are now. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. It's good, it's good seeing, like, just everything, like, from... Mm. Yeah, a couple months ago, like we met a couple months ago at a small group. Yeah. And just like the the consistency that you've been putting into like your journey, it's cool seeing that. Yeah. Um, that's that's what's up. So we just what did we what did we just do? Where are we at right now? And yeah, what did we just do? So we at this gym, man, and uh, we just finished this intense workout. You introduced me to the gym, so <laughs> appreciate you coming. Um, so we didn't get a chance to do like an intro in the beginning, but pretty much what we did, and we'll we'll cut this up. Pretty much what we did, we did a, a AMRAP workout, as many reps as possible, for 15 minutes straight. So the workout was, it was about four exercises, and you know, one day came in and she, she pretty much crushed it for not working out in a minute. So I gotta say, like, congrats to you. <laughs> congrats to you for like putting in that work. That's that's pretty good, like, yeah. for coming in. And, yeah, like, I actually really in. like working out, it's a lot of fun. I just need to like, I think my biggest thing is consistency. I think a lot of people get scared to pull up to the gym because they're like, oh, like, there's people who are super advanced or whatever, but I think if you're just content with like where you are, like, yeah. hey, if I'm a beginner, I'm a beginner, and I'm gonna hit these fives, but I'm gonna get these fives my all, I think like it'll help you be consistent to like grow over time. Right, and like, as we went through the sets, like, I'm the like, first one was like, oh my gosh, like, let's go. And then as you went through the sets, when we got to the third set, like, how did your body start to feel as we went through the whole workout from the beginning yeah. to the end? Yeah, I think once we got to the third set, I was prompt. I was like, let's go, let's go. And um, I think I liked how you mixed it up, too, like, with the assistant pull-up. I'm like, oh, I need to start doing those because I felt like that actually helped me make it through the workout because once we were off the floor, I was like, okay, at least I have the bands now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, huh. So it was a nice relief before we get to the very end. So I think it was a nice circuit to, like, just help me keep going, keep getting through everything. That's what's up. Well, I appreciate you like again, coming through. And then you tried earlier um, some of the uh, pre the workout supplements that we have. So, mm -hmm. which one did you try first? So we tried the pre workout first, and I actually really loved it. It tastes like Jolly Ranchers. It was like muy delicioso. So <laughs> shout out to you know the team who worked on it. And yeah, now it's after the workout, so it looks like it's time for some. I guess post. we gotta restore. Yep. <laughs> try to restore BCA. So screw the top off for you. Mm -hmm. And. Got a bottle, a fresh bottle of water here for you to try it out. All right, let's do it. Most people say that it tastes like grape mm. and um, almost like cool, like yeah, Kool Aid. All right. Like you get the Kool Aid when we were kids. Yeah. Yeah, it tastes like that for for the most part. All right, it's good. It's good. All right. So just trying the BCA store. I feel like my body's recovering from <laughs> like the workout. Shaking. I'm like, I think it's a napkin over there. Should I do that? Or? I think you should be good. Like I you can pour it on there. Yeah. yeah. I'm and I'll clean it, I'll clean it up after I make sure. Okay. Time supplements get a little messy, it's all good. Yeah, you know, it's the real. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, there we go. It's a little messy, but yeah. that's, that's a pre-workout for you. I mean, post-workout. Real right. life, real life. So then, you, and then like, anybody that tries this product, yeah. shake it up. It's dope, though. You feel like you're in a commercial. <laughs> We did some hard work. <laughs> yeah, we put some work in. All right. All right. And you take it. Let's see. Let's see what she thinks. Yeah, that's fire. That's fire too. You're good. That's fire too. So that's yeah. So you got your before and your after. Yeah. So appreciate uh, appreciate you trying it out and. We'll make sure, you know, on us from Revolve Nutrition to you. We're going to send you a sample box over to your house. Appreciate so, it. So, appreciate you. Now, this is a great motivation for me is to get back into the gym and, like, start being serious. And now I have everything I need to get these gains on fleet. Yeah. So, I'm really excited, actually, to start my journey back up again and get really serious. Let's go. And you, I mean... Be it, people, a lot of people don't know though, when you're on like stage performing, mm -hmm. that's a workout. Mm -hmm. Like, cause you got a whole routine to remember. And then like, you're singing at the same time. So, and you can't be like, huffing mm -hmm. the puff. <laughs> like, no, like, honestly. honestly. I feel like that's what helped me out today. So I didn't like completely die. Cause on stage, you know, running back and forth and stuff. So we'd be like 10 minute sets and then another one at the end. So I think all those different things, like it was like a little baby workout for, for today. So I wasn't like just 
You saw me on the floor though. You know, you, you might see some scenes where I'm just like, <laughs> but we still make it through. <laughs> okay, good. Hey, well, it showed in today's workout, mm -hmm. so I really appreciate it. Now we're gonna transition over to our podcast questions for today. So, y'all ready? You ready? Yeah. All right. All right, everybody. Straight out from Freshly Baked and Fennel Fit Gym, mm -hmm. we are here doing our short little podcast segment of this video. So. We're here with Wanda, as we were here before, hey. all right? And we really appreciate you um, like, coming through, doing the workout and stuff. But we got a couple questions that I actually have gotten from some of my friends and there's different people on my you know, social media. Mm -hmm. And the first question is this. So topic number one is gonna be, today's generation, there's a lot of people that are like, hey man, like, I wanna be just spiritual. I, I just wanna be spiritual and that's it. Like, I'm, um, good vibes, the, the universe, this yeah. and that, versus, you know, God versus spirituality, mm -hmm. or God spirituality versus good vibes and energy. Yeah. Which one is the right one to go with? Like, what you know, spirit spirituality with spirit of God, or is spirituality like good vibe? Like, what's the right way yeah. to think? So I think with that, I would say like just the fact that a lot of people are just into like being like, oh, I want to be spiritual, kind of shows that like a lot of people's inner beings lean towards like there's some type of source, there's something bigger than this mm. out there in the world, and so I think that's a good sign. Just overall across the board but i will say one thing i've learned over time whenever you just look at general spirituality versus like having actually having faith in god and stuff like that is the accountability aspect so whenever you just look at like spirituality there's no there's no overarching source there's no order so god is like a god of order and he has rules regulations you know good versus evil and stuff like that and so whenever you take god out the picture and it's just spirituality a lot of times we end up being the god so mm. like we make our definition of what's good and what's not good and we might change our hearts and be like oh well you know this benefits me so this is good for now yeah. but when it doesn't benefit me it's not and um yeah the, there's problems in that because then what i say is good might not be what you say is good and that creates conflict in the world whenever you're talking about billions of people and um i think People don't want accountability. Obviously, accountability doesn't feel good because then you're like, oh, if I'm accountable, I actually have to be responsible. <laughs> yeah, I actually have to be challenged, like and stuff like that. And so, I think that's whenever that's where people it's like, oh, with God, like you can't get away with that because God mm. clearly writes out like in the Bible, like these are like what this is what I say my definition of good is, and this is my standard. And so, I think um, I lean towards having a relationship with God because I feel like if you just look at everything he's done for us, he's shown with his actions like he loves us and he cares for us and he's trying to redeem us back to him. And he's also given us a standard of like what good is, what evil is. So that way you're not just out here like, oh, what is it? You know, no, just, just, just living. Um, and so I personally lean towards having a relationship with God. And I think that's what the difference is between the two. I think people are leaning towards the same thing. But whenever you're just doing good vibes, like... There's no structure, no order, right. which ultimately leads to chaos in the end. I love that. I love that breakdown because, like, that's even, excuse me, sorry, even with relationships. Yeah. Um, like, like yeah, we're yeah. going into it with good vibes. I feel the chemistry is so yeah. good. And yeah. then, like I said, there's no order. Mm -hmm. um, it says, you know, our steps are ordered. Yeah. Right? And so, like, if we're just, like I said, doing it on our own, mm -hmm. then what's the point? Like, there's, where's going to lead no, somewhere? No, think fast. That's how you end up in situationships. There's so many people in situationships, and it's because you you didn't set anything from the beginning. It's just like, oh yeah, I'm just vibing, and then it's like it's been four years and you're just vibing. I'm like, okay, yeah. And living so okay, and then I guess this could transition to this question real quick before we get into our other one we have written down. Situationships, so people that right away like, hey, I'm gonna live with this other person. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. I'm gonna live with someone. And there's really no plan to it. It's just, mm -hmm. I'm living with you and yeah, we're probably gonna get married one day. Is it like, oh, I'm doing a trial run? Yeah, or, so, like, what's it? yeah, just from experience. Cause I'm actually about to get married soon. From experience, whenever you get into the living with somebody with no plan, those people usually end up not getting married historically. And what happens is you just kind of get in the limbo and y'all just live together forever. And then mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well, I mean, I've already been living with you and everything's cool, so why we gonna change it? And then it kind of goes to the whole accountability. So it's like, if I can have everything without the commitment, what's the point of committing? <laughs> so I think like that's whenever, when I look at like living with someone, like I think at the time whenever you're just living in it and you're young, you're like, oh, why not? Like, this is my best friend. Like, let's just live together. Like, whatever. Like, and it might even be like from a pure place of like, oh, like I'm not cool with anybody else and this is my bestie. Like, let's roommates and like whatever but then you literally a lot of times end up getting stuck like yep. and then y'all are just living together and there's no plan there's no future it's true yeah. and then like that's how you know, kids are come out of situations yeah. like that and, yeah. and, and, do you, and I know one big thing that it talks about is like being able to uh, I'm trying to remember the word Whitlock yeah having yeah. kids out of Whitlock yeah like that 
it's becoming so normal now. Yeah. Which, which you know, some people, everyone has a situation, but yeah. that type of mindset too is like, oh, it's just okay. Yeah. Just like, hey, like, yeah, let's just have a child without regardless yeah. of us being married or not. Yeah, and I think also it's just examples because if you don't see a lot of people doing it the other way, then it's like, well, if everybody else is, you know, falling short, then whatever. So I think. It also is an encouragement for people to yeah. have high standards and thug it out, you know? Because you know your flesh doesn't want to obviously follow what God is saying to do, but it takes people like, you know, dying to flesh and like actually following God to like have, be able to set examples so that way other people will be like, oh, you actually did it. You're normal. I like you. And I bet, like, maybe I can do it too if she did it, you know, or right. if he did it. So That makes sense. So then me, so we have an obligation as people too, and we have an opportunity to like lead, lead by example. Like, yeah. like you said, you're about to get married and. I mean, that's, that's an encouragement, like, it's great to hear that. Yeah. I, I, I had a point where I was going to get married, too, yeah. and it didn't work out. But it's yeah. good to see, like, the steps that you're talking about. You're yeah. taking, like, every day, hey, every Tuesday, you're meeting with uh, you know, Pastor Mom and them to make sure yeah. y'all are doing the right thing. Yeah. To, as you, when you get into it, it flows. Mm-hmm. So, much respect. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, being that example. Topic number two. I know we kind of went into more time. <laughs> it's all good. Um, what is the Trinity? Um, help, yeah. you know, the younger generation understand what the Trinity is. Yeah, so the Trinity is basically how there's God and you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So they all do different things for us, but they all work together to ultimately make what is God. And so I think it's really dope to understand the Trinity because, you know, that's how that's how we flow. And, like, that's basically God has set everything up, like, in advance before we were even here to, like, help us succeed in life. So even when Jesus was here on earth, he's like, y'all think I'm lit. Whenever I leave, there's someone coming who's even greater than me. And so he was talking about the Holy Spirit because it's like when Jesus was here, he could only be one person at a time like we're talking right now. Like, it's like, oh, this is cool that I can heal you right now, but I can literally only be here right now. Like, I'm in Jerusalem right now. Like, y'all, y'all want me over there, but, you know, that's going to take a couple of days. I have to walk. So it's really cool because, like, now we have, like, the Holy Spirit. And, like, he can be with all of us at all times. Mm. And so, um, yeah, the Trinity is just all components of who God is. And, yeah, out here to... Save the world. <laughs> okay, I love it. So, so when it comes down to the, uh, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. So, with Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit is like its own, like own person, like yeah. like per, in a sense. Like yeah. it's, I think some people get confused with that. It's like, yeah. is the Holy Spirit like, yeah, it, like is its own person? So I remember Pastor Noah saying like, the the Holy Spirit, not. Yeah, no, Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. They say like they say Holy Spirit instead of the Holy Spirit. Like yeah. it's a thing. Yeah, it's an actual like. Yeah. Yeah, how, how's yeah. that? I feel like it's like, yeah, too. I feel like at the end of the day, it's hard to explain. It's like beyond all of our comprehension. Yeah, <laughs> but the easiest way I can explain it in like ways that we can understand is kind of like water. Mm. Like water is a solid liquid and gas, but like its actual scientific structure is still the same. Mm-hmm. And so it's like it can exist in different forms, yet mm. still be the same. Like I can have this droplet of water that then turns into ice, but then if I heat it up, you know, it could be a gas or if I, or it can be water, you know, and so. Um, that's like the way I would describe it. Like they all have different functions, different yeah. forms. They serve different purposes, but they're all yet the same. No, so omnipresent. Yeah. In, mo- in anywhere. Yeah. yeah. That's that's powerful. That's good to understand. Yeah, because a lot of, I get that question asked a lot, and mm-hmm. it's good to hear different perspectives. I mm-hmm. was explaining. So we'll go to our third. I think this is our third and final. No, we have two more. Um, praying versus doing it on your own, and consistency with prayer. Why is it important? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, prayer, I think, is definitely important because at the end of the day, like, we're all here to have a relationship with God. So, in a relationship, if you don't have communication, it's like, what do you have? If you don't talk to the person, like, you're in love with, like, what are you doing? And so, for me, like, prayer is, like, that communication, talking to God, like, getting to know Him, telling Him how you feel. Like, even with somebody you know, like, you can know how they feel, but if they never approach you, it's kind of like, why do you never talk to me? Like, yeah, I know you're upset, but you never come to me and tell you you're upset. Like, are we even close? Like... So I think prayer is really dope because it's a way for you to, like, talk to God, be close to God, tell him how you feel, learn how he feels, you know, and have an ongoing dialogue because that's what he wants at the end of the day. It's a relationship with us. So I think it's definitely important. I think some people think, oh, like, you're holy. Can you pray for me? Like, maybe God will listen to you. Kind of like that younger sibling tactic. Like, oh, you know, dad likes you better. Like, But it's like, no, he loves all of us. Mm -hmm. Like, just talk to him. And so I think that's why prayer is really important. And when when some people pray, it's like, man, am I praying right? Mm -hmm. Did I say it? I feel like I'm praying wrong. Yeah. How, how do people? The, I had a friend yesterday talk about that too. They're like, man, like I feel like I'm praying wrong and I'm not getting to the bag and I'm not. Yeah. How, what's the 
correct way for people to think in that sense. Yeah. I think, actually, the Bible has the Lord's Prayer, so mm. if you look at it just like memorization, it can seem, like, all weird, but if you look at it like a structure, it's actually laying things out for you, like, uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, so, like, give praise. Ask for his kingdom come, his will to be done. That, like, that's a heart posture. Like, not my will, but your will be done, you know. Give me my daily bread. Give me what I need. And stuff like that. Um, but just, like, as it kind of goes on, like, if you actually look at that as a structure, it can give you advice on how to pray and get your heart right, like, while you're asking for things and while you're talking to him. And, like, it even goes into different things, like, oh, God, like, help me to forgive people who have wronged me and stuff like that. So, like, it really, God has given you keys on, like, how to pray. But outside of that, too, just, it's really a conversation, like, of course he's God, so give him reverence, yeah. you know, because sometimes we get co too comfortable, you know, because that's our homie, but at the same time, you know, give him reverence, like, <laughs> right, he, right, he right. created everything, um, but I think besides some of the reverence, just talk to him, like, he really just wants to get to know you, like, y'all are close, like, talk to him like you normally talk, because he created you, he made right. you the way you are, and yeah, just let, give him reverence, let, you know, give him praise, but also let him know how you feel, and just have a conversation with him. I love that. I love that. Yeah, because a lot of people get confused on how, like, hey, I feel uncomfortable praying right now. I was like, okay, well, then maybe you're not praying enough. Mm -hmm. Some people, I've had uh, questions asked, like, hey, when I go to church, I feel sad. I said, why do you feel sad? Because when it's praise and worship, it, it, it seems kind of sad when people... I don't know, like it just seems like I'm sad with praise and worship. I've never heard someone say that before. That's crazy. But like, like you might be people, convicted. <laughs> yeah, it might be convicted. Yeah, and that's probably what it is yeah. too. Like people are convicted and they're afraid to step into that mm -hmm. that vulnerable space. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's just like what I've seen in our just generation. Um, it's just a lot. Yeah, it's, it's guys really dive into people, and it's like some people are afraid to take the extra step. Yeah, and one thing I would definitely say too is like. I think it's a human nature to want to run whenever you sin. Like, you look at Adam and Eve, like, they were hiding, and God is like, where are you at? Like, why are you hiding? Like, we were literally just close, like, doing communities together. So I think just to always remember to go towards God, like, that's the whole point. He literally wants you to come towards him whenever you sin. Like, it's okay. He forgives you. He's not an abusive father. He actually cares. <laughs> right. So in healthy relationships, whenever you mess up, that person's supposed to be there to love you through it and help you get through it. So I would say just always remember, like, if you feel that weird conviction, like, that's okay. And go closer to God. Lean closer to God. Let him know what you've done wrong because he doesn't want to, like, scold you. He wants to actually love you and, like, help you get through this process and, like, have those, your old ways fall off of you. That's powerful. That's powerful. I love it. We're going to go to question four. All right. Uh, let's see here. All right. So question number four is, what does it mean to steward after something? So multiplication. And the reason I get that question from is John Beaver's book, uh, X. Yeah, I think it's just called X. X. Um, and for multiplication, multiplying, like, what's given to you and stuff. So, yeah, what does it mean to steward after something and to multiply? Yeah, I think steward after something, multiplying, that's kind of like how I live my life, actually, and, like, why I do what I do, um, like, at high levels. I think it just means doing an excellent job. So with whatever's given to you, even if it's little, doing the best you can with that little and being responsible. Like, on a practical level, like, if you have a job, show up on time to your job. Mm. Actually do your job <laughs> and mm. stuff like that, you know? If you have a car, you don't get some oil changes, you know? Wash it, <laughs> keep it clean. Um, stuff like that. So I think it's just managing what you have to the best of your ability. Like as a business owner now, like that means like I have to actually stay on top of my finances because business money is different. Like you have to allocate funds to pay people. So I can't just be like, oh man, I just spent all my money. Sorry, I can't pay you. Like what? <laughs> like so. And also even like things like paying tithes. Like because if I wasn't organized, I can't pay my tithes. I'm like I don't know what my profit is. So like to me, like that's a new level of now I have to like make a weekly thing of checking my finances so that way I can do the math and know my profit right. so then I can pay my tithes and stuff like that. So, like, it just depends on, like, where you're at, like, um, different levels. It's just managing what he's giving you so that way you can do what you're supposed to do. I love that. Yeah. And that's huge that you said that, like, um, being a good steward in that regard because you, 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 oh, I want the Mercedes Benz, but your Honda, you're treating it like crap. It's dirty. Yeah. Your car's dirty. Like you said, the oil change. Yeah. Like, what you gonna do with the Mercedes? Then? Yeah. You're gonna mess it up. <laughs> mess it up. Mercedes fixes is not cheap. <laughs> It's like, well, yeah, it's not cheap. Mess, mess up one part, you're going to be like, a thousand. It's like a thousand. You said what? you wanted the car. You <laughs> said you wanted it, right? Responsibility. Yeah. So that's huge. Can we talk about your brand? Mm -hmm. Is it okay? We could, yeah, let's do, it, let's do it. Let's do it. So she, she walked up in the gym. With got, a, got a purse, you know, we got the wind brand. So the wind brand. Talk about this. Yeah, so it's kind of like when we're just talking about stewardship, you know. So the wind brand is about, like, winning in life and, like, just winning in what God's called you to do. And so... 
We got these purses. I even got some lip gloss. Hold up. Let me she see. got the whole brand yeah, in the bag. Yeah, Let's so go. I'm Repres really going into beauty. I don't know if I have the lip gloss today, but this is different. I have not seen this before. I mean, I'm probably yeah. not in fashion enough, but still, yeah. this is this is pretty lit. So make sure you're. But she go drop her IG and stuff yeah. after this. We might not got the gloss today, but we got lashes. So this is one of the lash cases. But yeah, so it's kind of like a lifestyle brand. So one, just the mentality of winning and winning in your relationship with God. But then I really like fashion and lifestyle, practical things. So. Yeah, one of these things is the purse is coming soon, and mm. today it actually just helped me reinforce that, like, yeah, this purse is legit, because I've worn this purse to a wedding, but I also can wear it to my workout, so it can get you right. It's a lifestyle, right. tell me, and it's, your brand is, is uh, I see it, it said Win on there, mm -hmm. so when, why, why is it called Win? Yeah. yeah, so Win, so it means for winning within, so I feel like if you're not really winning within, then like, all the external things is not even it. So that, that even translates into workouts, like winning within, winning with your health. Whenever you're working out, you're not gonna make it through if you're not mentally winning within. Like you have to tell yourself mentally, like I wanna push through and I'm trying to win to succeed and all that stuff. And then even further, like as Christians, like winning in my relationship with God is my ultimate priority. Yeah. And what that means is like actually spending time with God, prioritizing him over everything. And so that's where the win comes through. And then my name is also Wanda Ishola, so W-I-W-I-N. So, -I 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 Wanda Ishola Network, you know, a little, a little sauce. But yeah, that's where it comes from. And yeah, I'm really excited to, to do that and to flourish with my life as well. Well, keep the grind going, Wanda. Drop your IG, drop the website, drop everything so they can follow you. All right, so my Instagram is at OMG. It's Wanda, O-M-G, I-T-S-W-A-N-D-E. Let them know yours. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, at Q Gauze, Q G A U S C. And then the, the brand is at Revolve Nutrition underscore. So, yeah, make sure you follow us. We've got way more products than this, but you got your pre workout, your BCAAs. Um, but this was amazing. Y'all got to see the content of the workouts. If y'all haven't seen it already, the way we chop it up, we'll probably put it in the beginning. Um, Wande, thank you so much for coming through. Yeah, no problem. This is amazing. And um, hopefully, we'll get a chance to do it again. Right. But, yeah, appreciate you. It's lit.